Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. everyone, this is Larry. I want to take a moment to express my heartfelt gratitude for the incredible support you've shown since Selling in a Post-Trust World book launched earlier in August. Thanks to you, Selling in a Post-Trust World is making waves and helping sales professionals everywhere build authentic relationships. If you haven't grabbed your copy yet, head over to barnesandnoble.com and order yours today. And here's a special thank you. When you leave a review of the book, we'll give you instant access to our exclusive Selling in a Post-Trust World private podcast. This 12-episode series dives deeper into each chapter, offering actionable insights to elevate your sales game. Don't miss out. Order your copy, leave a review, and unlock exclusive content designed to help you sell from the heart. For more details, go to sellinginaposttrustworld.com. Thank you. Thank you for being part of this movement. Together, we're transforming the world of sales, one authentic relationship at a time. Hello, and welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Uh, it's another fine day here at Selling from the Heart. Great seeing you. Falls in the air. We're, we're, we're almost at that point of the year. Where has this year gone, by the way, Daryl? It's been a good Tell one, me. though, and it's been a great year at Selling from the Heart. Huge shout out. By the way, get ready to be challenged today. We've got Jill Schulman in the house. Some new content around the science of bravery. Just wait. This is going to be a fantastic episode today. And you're absolutely right. The year has flown by, but it's been a fantastic year at Selling from the Heart. And one of the things we always talk about at the beginning of the podcast is this incredible movement all over the world, friends, um, people in sales in all different roles, all different tenures, all different locations, different industries, but all united around this concept of saying, yes, I want to be genuine. I want to bring my authentic, authentic self to the table. I want to build trust. This is the core of selling from the heart. And we're so glad you're here. Yeah. I just, I just, before we get started, I got to give a special shout out to a gentleman named Stephen Ritchie. And what a great guy. And he warmed my heart because warmed my heart because not too long ago, he tagged me in a post on LinkedIn. And selling in a post-trust world is sitting next to two dear friends of mine who I look up to immensely. Mike Weinberg, who wrote the forward to selling in a post-trust world, and Jeb Blunt. And he goes, <laughs> These are the three Mount Rushmores in sales. <laughs> and I'm like, come on, come on, right? Get out of here, right? Me? Nah, come on. Steven Ritchie. You rock. I appreciate you. You actually almost made me cry, but thank you. I appreciate it. Beautiful. Larry's not old enough to be on Mount Rushmore. No, but you are. He is. No, you are, dude. <laughs> that was fantastic. <laughs> thank you so much. And thanks to everybody who's sharing the new book. Selling in a post-trust world continues to gain momentum. And, and this is such an incredible tool that's empowering people to build and sustain trust. Trust is the currency of sales. Well, today we're excited to have Jill Schulman in the studio. She is the founder and principal of Breakthrough Leadership Group. Jill brings a wealth of experience from her 13 years in sales and sales leadership, which laid the foundation for her expertise in leadership development. After honing her skills as a Marine Corps officer, she transitioned into sales management, where she continued to refine her leadership abilities. Jill is not only a passionate expert who excels in creating impactful leadership programs, but she's also a thought leader recognized for translating complex theories and practical actions that drive results. Get this. She is releasing a new book later on next year called The Science of Bravery. It delves into these themes, offering us a guide into cultivating courage and effective leadership in challenging environments. And don't you know, we face challenging environments. And the great news is Jill is here with us today to talk about all this. Jill, welcome to Selling from the Heart. Oh my God, it's so great to be here. Good to uh, see you again, Larry. Same here. Hello, Daryl. Oh, this is going to be such an incredible conversation about the science behind bravery. 
Mm-hmm. And as we get started, Jill, you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers, and that is, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? Ah, great. You know, I did ponder this, and what just comes to my heart when I answer this question is just doing the right thing, even when it's hard. Um, you know, as as salespeople, and you guys know I have a background in sales and sales leadership, you know, it's just making sure that we treat our customers the way we want to be treated, you know, do the right thing, you know, let's not overstate the benefits. Let's not, um, you know, take any shortcuts to sales. Let's do the right thing for our customers. In fact, um, I'm a little bit of a nerd. I don't know if you kind of notice and there it is background. That's a, that's a Marcus Aurelius. I'm a little bit of a, a nerd and love stoicism, but I think of Marcus Aurelius in the quote that he says, he says, Um, just do the right thing and the rest doesn't matter, right? So I think in sales, like selling from the heart is do the right thing for your customer. And and if you just use that as your guide to make decisions, I think you're selling from the heart. Um, And there's one other little thing that came to my heart when I was thinking about that question is just the concept of servant leadership. Um, You know, I, I, most of my career, I've been in leadership development. And when I think about servant leadership and when I've heard like the the master Ken Blanchard talk about servant leadership, he's like, leaders should be serving their people. Um, but, you know, their sales, so sales leaders should be doing everything they can to serve their salespeople to help them be successful. But this, our sales organization, our salespeople, they need to be serving the customer. So, mm-hmm. you know, those kind of together is what comes to mind for me. So selling from the heart means how do you best serve your customers? Um, and that really can mean sometimes saying that maybe my product isn't the best thing for you because that's the right thing to do. And then you build that credibility that's going to bring you so much long term. And then you can go to bed at night feeling pretty darn good about yourself. <laughs> oh, so, so good. So good. I'm glad you brought stoicism into this because I love that stuff. I geek out on that stuff all the oh, time. Oh, good. Well, we but could. There, but there, there's, I, I got to wrap this up and just, you know, in a little punchy, just selling from the heart way is <laughs> you just got to give a rip. And you just got to give a rip about the person sitting in front of you. Yeah. Simple as that, but yet it's so difficult for many to put into play. Yeah, that's so right. Like if you just really give a rip, care about that person and their success and what's going on in their world. If if you just, if you lead with that, you're going to sell so much more long-term, right? So it's almost a long game versus the short game. Yeah, give That's a rip. So good. Like <laughs> You're speaking just, our language. By the way, Jill, give a rip. It's just a G. It's just G-rated. That's all. Yeah, give a rip. I love it. Just, yeah. Okay. G-rated. Good. Good. Hey, I'm, you guys know I was a United States Marine, so I was like, I'll try to keep my language clean. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for that, by the way. And and it, I love this. You're speaking our language. And Larry and I were just talking today on the the Sales Tips Private Podcast that we do about that very thing, which is doing the right thing and, and integrity being being all of that. So then a lot of that requires bravery. Yeah. Uh, you got to be brave to do the right thing. So there is a science behind bravery. I thought bravery was just like, all right, I'm going to be brave. Let's go. Um, there's actually a science behind this. What is the inspiration? Give us, unpack yeah, this. Yeah, the inspiration. So here. um so I'm one of those, I, I'm like a lifelong learner. I love reading, I love learning. And um, a couple of years ago, I went back to school and decided to study the science of positive psychology, which is basically the science of happiness and well-being, mm-hmm. right? Um, and so when I was studying positive psychology at the University of Pennsylvania, like, you know, you always have to do a capstone at the end of the master's program. So basically what the research that I did Um, at the end of my program really surrounded the science of bravery. And the reason why I went that direction is I feel like there's so many people in all generations that think the key to happiness and well-being is staying comfortable, having the most comfortable, easiest life. And I really wanted to dive into the research there and like, is that true? Like just to have everything handed to you and have an easy life where everything, you know, is that really what happiness and fulfillment is all about. And, and the science tells us, no, no, it does not. So usually anything that brings us the greatest levels of, of happiness and fulfillment and pride are on the other side of things that are really freaking hard. Right. So I, I went down that path and said, no, what is it about bravery? Like, are you just brave or not? 
Is it learnable? Is it practicable? And so that's that's my original inspiration of going down that road, you know, of research and and my capstone is really about that. So I, I have now a, a program called Being Brave, and I'm using the word not just brave because then people think you either are or not, but being brave. It's a choice you can make, um, and and over time, it's something you can build that capacity. Um, you know, and and we know that you know based on science. Hey, I, I I love this because Daryl and I got in this deep conversation not too long ago about being uncomfortable and putting yourself in uncomfortable moments. And hey, let's just face it. As a salesperson, as a sales leader, as a senior level leader and executive, you're in uncomfortable business positions all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And can I add on to that? Yes. It, we are sometimes put in uncomfortable positions and we have to be able to deal with it. But in addition, I would say sometimes we have to step into discomfort. Yep. I love that. I, I like, like I'm the anti, like, <laughs> like I, I, maybe I should call my company or what I should um, name my title should be chief discomfort officer. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I want everyone to be uncomfortable. I want you to suffer a little because that's how you're going to grow. But specifically in sales, like, you know, Sometimes the right thing to do is to to tell your customer, deliver an insight or share something about the way they're doing business that might be hard to bring up, but it's going to bring them the most value that will lead to, you know, your solution. So, um, you know, my my background is in you know pharmaceutical sales and device, so it's mainly in like the healthcare space, you know. But that's one of the things that I would teach my team to do. Like if if a doctor is you know, not really measuring the right things or prescribing the best medications based on evidence-based medicine, mm -hmm. we need to have that uncomfortable conversation mm -hmm. because it's the right thing to do, right? And so that's where I think bravery comes into it. Like you, you probably know more about your area of expertise on what you're selling than they do. So you have to be comfortable getting uncomfortable and sharing your insight and sometimes making them a little bit uncomfortable of telling the other person, like the way you're currently doing things is losing a lot of efficiency and maybe costing your company a, a lot of dollars. Right. I mean, you're basically calling their baby ugly. You're telling them they're doing something wrong, but that's actually the kindest thing that we can mm -hmm. do for our customers. Like there's a difference between nice and kind. And I have to give um, some credit to my, my friend Curtis, who you know, it was uh like talks about that a lot, but you know, like being nice is just like, Oh, everything's good. You want my product, right? Kind is getting uncomfortable and having an uncomfortable conversation. Mm. I love this. And this, this is um, exactly what you hit in chapter two uh, mm -hmm. of selling in a post-trust world is we've got to, you know, do the inner work and that inner work requires putting ourselves in a place of discomfort intentionally. And, uh, and doing it proactively before you get in the situation. And I can imagine um, just the story of Jill Schulman, uh, Marines discomfort. <laughs> I yeah, I about like it. Maybe the a little Marines to know scale. discomfort, right? <laughs> Sales, discomfort, public speaking, not comfortable, right? Mm -hmm. All of these different areas. So I'm curious, what does Jill do behind the scenes to how do you how do you prepare yourself and maybe this gets into the actual science yeah of bravery and how that plays out in your world yeah so i think just in general it's 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 teaching people first and foremost about um why getting uncomfortable is the best thing for people and i've always believed that people ask me why did i choose the marine corps i'm like because it's the hardest duh like of course i want to be a marine <laughs> but i know i'm not like everyone else but i'm like because becoming a united states marine brought me the most pride and because it was such a hard path to achieve that that's what makes it so great and mm -hmm. many times i'll just ask people like when i do a keynote like think of your most proud accomplishment so everyone thinks of it and I say, tell the story to someone to your right and left. Tell that story. Did it have challenge? Did it have adversity? Were you uncomfortable? And it always does. So people know this intuitively. Yeah. We just need to develop the habit of people being comfortable stepping into discomfort, you know? So, you know, and, and, and really, if you look at the science, at least what I have in my model and what my book is going to be about, there's like really like three different like pillars 
to developing bravery. One is a brave mindset. And you guys know this. It's it's about, first of all, believing that you can. So br- brave mindset really teaches um, like Carol Dweck's work on growth mindset, mm-hmm. believing that, you know, instead of saying like, well, I'm not great in sales. Well, you're not great in sales yet. You can become great in sales or I'm not good at closing. Well, that's ridiculous. You're not good at closing yet. You have to believe that you can become great in something that, and it's not going to be easy, you know, necessarily because, you know, where you are right now to where you want to go. So we talk about just the, it, we got to focus more on mindset. I think many times in organizations, we focus on just the skill, like do it this way, mm-hmm. open this way, do these features and benefits and close this way, which is good. And we practice those, but are we helping people really on their their beliefs and their mindset before they go in and do the sale. So, you know, so the, the model is about what is the mindset? If, if you, if you believe that there's no way this customer is going to buy from me, there's no way. And you walk into the sale. Do you think mm-hmm. that mindset is going to impact your performance? Heck yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So we got to work on mindset. So brave mindset is, is growth mindset. It's actually stress is, enhancing mindset. There's a lot of exciting science there that if you believe that challenges and stress make you stronger, um, you have a positive stress response and then you don't have an unhealthy stress response. And I could go on talking about that science for two hours, but I don't want to. (laughs) (laughs) And then the last part of brave mindset is, is developing optimism and positivity. Um, You know, there's, there's many studies that have been done in organizational psychology that if you if you work on the skill of developing realistic optimism um, with and generate positive emotions, you're going to be more successful at work, especially in sales. I mean, imagine a salesperson that goes in, you know, like, like this. it's not going to be as good as if they go in with that positive emotion. So that's, that's a positive mindset. And then there's positive action, which you guys know day in and day out, you just got to, you got to go and you need to take action and do that. And we've got a lot of, um, you know, science there. And then the third element is what we called developing brave connections, um, brave relationships. And that is, you know, seeking out the people, um, you know, in your life, people that you look up to people that you respect, people who have gone down the path, like in sales, you know, when I became a brand new sales manager in the pharmaceutical industry, I was like looking around and I'm like, who's the most successful, like sales person when I was in sales or sales leader, and I went, went up to him and I was brave and said, hi, I'm Jill Schulman. What are the things that you've done that led to your success? So Brave Connections is about, you know, proactively asking questions, be humble enough. It, it takes some bravery to say, I don't have all the answers. Um, will you give me some advice? Will you give me some feedback on things I can do better? So that's kind of an overview of, of what, the, what the, the research is about and what the book's about. And, you know, I, I, I like I, I like this whole entire model. I can't wait to read your book when it comes out. I want I want to go back to this. Uh, I think you said brave connections, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and this is what's racing through my head because we're massive believers of it here in selling from the heart. Is I don't care what level of sales you're at, and this applies even to the executive level. Is you got to put yourself in proximity to people who have power. And yeah. sometimes that means getting really uncomfortable and reaching mm. out going, who are the most influential people in my marketplace? Who are maybe some of the most influential people inside of the places that I work with, which are my clients? Who are these people? And you got to get to know these people, mm. both yeah. professionally and personally. And sometimes that's uncomfortable. But what we we've walked through it at Selling from the Heart. But when you can make those brave connections, put yourself in proximity to people mm-hmm. at power, it's the fast track. It's the fast track button to the head of the line. In some instances, is some of the best relationships you'll ever make. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, sometimes the most important relationships that you need to make, or the the relationships you need to try to develop, are going to be the hardest ones to nurture. And that's where it requires that bravery. Like, you know, don't go to the person that's just always available. That's nice. That has no influence over the buying decision. Like be strategic. Think about who are the people that I want to pursue, you know, building that brave connection, that brave relationship with, because you're right. That just, that's going to make all the difference in the world in terms of, um, you know, your success, your sales success. I love what you said earlier about bravery not being a yes, no, I'm brave or I'm not brave, but it's it's something that I'm becoming. And I th- mm-hmm. it's a decision, I think you said, in the moment. 
Um, it's a decision that can be made proactively. I really, really like that. Um, I'd like for you to just unpack that a little bit more in terms of the sales people and sales leaders who are listening in. Um, what what else can we do to make that decision? Because it seems like a decision you got to make regularly, right? You don't just say, okay, I listen to the <laughs> podcast today. I'm going to be brave and you're good to go. This is, uh, this is I'm assuming, a decision that's got to be made in some very critical moments along the way. Yeah, gosh. Um, I wish we had five hours, um, but I'm gonna, I wanna try to just keep it somewhat simple. So bravery can be developed and nurtured. And we know that absolutely with scientific certainty, um, but the way to do it um, is, is incremental. So if someone is a little bit more timid and they end up allowing mm -hmm. fear to dictate their actions, um, they're going to have to start out small and do small things and, and then bigger things and bigger things to build that capacity. The things I have to do to scare me might be larger than what someone else does. Um, but I want to share a little bit about what happens in the brain because there's a part of the brain called the ACC. It's in the back part of our brain. It's our prefrontal cortex and our ACC are the two parts of our brain where we actually develop bravery. And, um, you know, what what the researchers have found, and I'll just give you one simple thing, um, is when you do something that that makes you uncomfortable, that makes more neural pathways to the ACC and it increases the, the size of the ACC. So just like our muscles are, you know, will grow if we work them out, mm -hmm. if you start taking action, you know, toward taking brave action and you get the reps in and you work out that muscle, that part of our brain actually grows. Wow. So, I mean, our, our brain is so amazing and it's, it's, it's neuroplasticity. It will change based on how we're challenging it. You know, so the classic example, and this is, you're going to see in my book is, you know, people who do um, ice baths or cold plunging, you guys, everyone's, it's all the rage, right? Everyone does cold plunging there. So I got a thumbs up there. So if someone cold plunges, like no thumbs up from me, no thumbs up from me, Jill. <laughs> oh, come on. No, zero. You gotta be Sorry. brave, Larry. Sorry, Jill. Sorry, Daryl. I'm not going Dude. down that path. Oh man. I'm Larry, not, I, I got, Hey Jill, I got to build up my brave <laughs> capacity on that one. Nevertheless. <laughs> right. And, and it doesn't have to be that. I mean, it can be anything <laughs> that we are like, Oh gosh, I really don't want to do this. Right. You know, but I don't know, before you jump in an ice bath, I don't think anyone's going like, yes, I can't wait to do it. Maybe there's some people out there, but, you know, there's no. just an example where if people do that, it gets easier over time. Like the first time they it do does. it, it's like, oh my God, it I got to get, but over time, you're literally, they, they've seen, you know, a correlation with that part of the brain, you know, so it's finding out what is that one thing that I'm uncomfortable doing? Let me, that, let me now work on my mindset. Sometimes we have self-limiting beliefs and this gets into my psychology background. Like we might be having this little like dialogue in our head going like this person's never gonna talk to me. They hate me. They're never gonna buy from me. Well, that is not a very helpful mindset to have. So there's some things that we can do to you know change our mindset to be more optimistic um, that we are going to be able to do that. So we work on the mindset. Um, then we take those brave actions. And the more that we do it, we build that capacity over time. You know, I, I, I just got, I got to make a funny statement on this one, but it's just, it, it just salespeople. I love you, but I'm going to tell you something right now. Can you imagine if you became more brave when it comes to prospecting and business development? Mm. Think about that one for a second. Mm. That's where it's going to play out at. Yeah. How many yeah. of us have that fear, right? And all the stories that play out in our head. Mm -hmm. What happens if we became more brave? We changed mindset and the stories we told ourselves around prospecting. I love that. Yeah. And, and an add on that, like the thing that you're dreading doing most, maybe it's prospecting. That's the thing you have to have the discipline to do first thing in the morning. Yep. Yep. Because we have limited resources when it comes to willpower. Like you have to attack it first thing because that makes you feel so accomplished, right? So what is that thing prospecting, right? That maybe makes you uncomfortable. Um, let's apply that bravery and then and then attack it first thing in the morning, get it done right away. Because then we're so much more productive the rest of the day. If you just keep waiting until the end of the day, like you just keep waiting until it's convenient and it's going to be easy to prospect. <laughs> It's not going to happen. Oh, I have a lot of emails to do. I just, just I have to do all this. Mm -mm. What's the most important thing to do? 
you do your prospecting first, then you give yourself time to, you know, catch up on email and stuff. So love that tie in. I love this challenge for Larry to go in an ice bath. I think we've, uh, I think so. we've I definitely think we done this it. here. I think we should video uh, it. I, 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 think I, do. I know Larry's definition of an ice bath is taking his favorite beverage and dropping it in a cooler, but that's not what we're talking <laughs> about, Larry. But this deliberate discomfort and this intentionally getting in that that place that is is uncomfortable is is something that is so, so powerful. And as we wrap up, um, I just would like to just peel this onion back a little bit more. Like what else, what's, if you could share one more thing with a salesperson who's out there and maybe they're just really, maybe they're new at this. Um, and, and I think we can all remember the first cold call we made walking into an office. I'll confess, I stumbled all over myself. I couldn't remember anything but I did it. And, um, you know, and, and so there, there, there are these moments in sales where we, we have to confront our fear. So for the, the folks that are newer in sales, or maybe we even have some people listening in that are thinking about, I don't know, should I get in sales? That's going to be really hard. Yeah. What would you say to them? And, and because it's hard, <laughs> do it. Do yes. it. Sales <laughs> is the best, the best career. I mean, it's, you're gifted with usually great interpersonal skills. It's exciting, you know, so because it's hard, that's exactly why you want to do it. Um, you know, and as you get started, I just want to end on this is, you know, you just, you want to avoid the regret, right? So I think of why people really want to be brave is because when you're not brave, then you, you wonder like, what could have happened? You know, you live that mm -hmm. life of regret. So day in and day out when you're going and selling, like do the hard thing, lean into the discomfort, right? And, building that connection with that really influential person, you know, um, telling them what they need to hear that best serves them um, or closing at the end of the sale, lean into that discomfort. And the more that you do that, right, the more it's going to become easier. And I, and if you're a, if you're a, a fan of stoicism, I can wrap this all up with one quote from Seneca. <laughs> so, and I wrote this one down here. Um, Seneca says, um, it is not because things are difficult, that we do not dare, but because we do not dare, things are difficult. So if we're not daring, if we're not leaning into our discomfort, things are going to be hard for us as salespeople. We're going to be in a difficult situation. But if you lean into um, the difficulty and the discomfort, then things are going to go really well. So as salespeople, we have to be brave. That's our job, right? It's, I think it's part of our DNA mm -hmm. and we have to, and if you need help learning how to be brave, I'm I'm happy to happy to help. You know, just yeah. Share so, how can folks get more Jill Schulman in their life? Because I know everybody <laughs> is asking this right now. Yeah. Um, well, you can go to my website, uh, JillSchulman.com, um, S C H U L M A N, so one L. Um, and if you go onto my website, um, there is a brave assessment that you can take, a free assessment that'll give you some insight and in going like, is it my mindset I need to work on? Is it the brave actions? Is it the brave connection? So it'll give you an idea of, of where you can work on your bravery to that can lead to higher levels of success in sales and um, and also well-being. Because is if we can learn the skill of being brave, it'll not only bring us more success in sales, but this applies to not just sales, but all aspects of your life. Right, um, which will lead to higher levels of happiness and well-being, which kind of circles it back to positive psychology. So, I'm very unlike most positive psychology practitioners, who are more about more the, you know, the not the fluffy, but the the happy side. I'm more about the hard edges, bravery. No, no woo woo, just do it. <laughs> no woo woo, just do do. Yes. <laughs> So Joe, what a gift sharing time with you today. Thank you so much for investing in all of us. We can't wait for your book to come out. We're going to be cheering you on in that. And uh, you are a true selling from the heart champion. We so appreciate you. All right. Thank you so much for having me. That's our I can't wait day. to see you at the ice bath challenge. Oh, <laughs> stop it, Jill Shulman. There you go. Jill just threw the, threw the gauntlet oh. down, Larry. This is good. You've been talking about, you wrote it in the book, get uh, comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. I, hey, Daryl, I need some more bravery. <laughs> hey, Jill, I'm going to take you up. You and I, I, I need to just lay on the virtual couch as Jill Shulman helps me. We're bringing her back. Okay. We're bringing Jill back. She's back, oh. folks. <laughs> 
we have, have I'm, I'm going to commit to help him with all the things so that he yes. can jump in that ice Here bath. Comes the yep. positive psychologist. Okay, Larry, <laughs> lay it on. We got a minute. Oh, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Larry, um, I think we need to set this up. So we're going to have a follow up. And then all of your listeners, you just, they're going to be waiting to see this. So this is going to be exciting. Hey, by the way, <laughs> but, oh my. <laughs> I just, I just challenge you in front of your entire yeah, audience. You've got to do it, right? Now. This is this is the first time in how we have not ended this podcast. So, right? <laughs> Daryl was getting brave on stepping out of his That's comfort right. zone and how he wraps up this podcast. So, uh, Jill, been, you are off on us. That's good stuff. I love it. I love it. Well, the gauntlet's been thrown down. I love it. So much fun. <laughs> what a powerful conversation yeah. today. And this concept of bravery. Um, what Jill's come up with here, I, I encourage everybody make sure to go to her website. We'll put the link in the show notes. Let's all take this bravery assessment together and, and let's make this a topic of conversation because I, you can't wait for her book to come out. We got to get engaged in this because this complements what you talk about mm -hmm. in selling a post-trust world. And when you get uncomfortable and do that type of uncomfortable work yourself and well, jumping in an ice bath is is part of it, but it's also taking a deep dive into <laughs> into yourself and into that mindset um, that Jill was talking about. So we want to encourage you go take that bravery assessment. And Larry, this is going to be something I'm sure we're going to be talking about here at Selling from the Heart for a long time. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Here, here's the first thing. Then you can wrap up on this. Is the first thing I think of is practice. Mm -hmm. You know, and we've talked about just do it, right? You just got to just suck it up and do it. But it's going to require some intentionality, but you got to practice this. And the first time, right, you step out of this, you're going to get bumps and bruises, right? By the way, you're not talking me into a nice plunge after this, but still, you're going to get bumps <laughs> and bruises, but you got to practice this. You got to practice, practice, practice. I Just real quick, I remember the first time I wrote. It was the worst article I ever wrote, but you know what? I got really deliberate. Now and you wrote I a book. Stepped into it, and then I kept writing, and I kept writing, and I kept writing, and I kept writing, which turned into a couple books. But if I take Joe's model, right, I had to get my mindset right. I took yep. action upon it, and I found the right connections along the way that can help me. So, so practice cool. being brave. I love it. Well, what a great conversation today. We've got an incredible roster of guests coming up. Just wait till you hear who's in the lineup throughout this winter. It's going to be a fun time here at Selling from the Heart. So stay tuned, like, subscribe. Thank you to everybody who is leaving reviews for this podcast. It's helping us spread this movement of authenticity right here in the sales profession we all love. We've got some great things in motion. Larry, I'm excited. Um, thank you to everybody who's going to selling into posttrustworld.com. Make sure to get in on the private podcast there, selling into posttrustworld.com. You'll learn how to get access to the podcast where Larry goes deep in each chapter. We put Larry on the couch. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> you're gonna get some, you're gonna get some great insights beyond the book. Is a great companion. All of it just so excited. So thank you to everybody. Till next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic. Keep building trust, practice being brave, and most of all, self from the heart.